Hello, my name is Tom Martin, and I am one of the trainers here at TechScan. And today we're going to go over how to choose and implement the calibration method that is best for your F-Scan application. So in this course, we're going to discuss the three different methods of calibration, how to choose the calibration method that is best for your application, and the proper procedure and protocol for each of the calibration methods. So calibration basically converts raw units or relative units into engineering units. Engineering units such as PSI, grams per centimeter squared, or millimeters of mercury, actually several other options we have in pressure. Proper calibration results in greater accuracy. So there are three available methods with the FCN system. There's walk calibration, there's step calibration, and then there's point calibration. So when choosing the method for your application, you should keep in mind that walk calibration is best suited for subjects that are just walking at a normal pace. Step calibration is best for things like jogging, running, jumping, or any other maneuver that isn't normal walking. Point calibration is best suited for standing or posture studies. And it's also the original calibration method that's been used in previous versions of the software. So if you're more comfortable with using point calibration, then you can continue to use that one. First one we're going to look at is, in detail, is walk calibration. Walk calibration is an automated and faster calibration method. With walk calibration, there is no need to perform a separate calibration routine because calibration is done automatically with each trial that is collected. It saves time, which increases the number of patients or trials that can be performed. It's recommended for clinical applications where the subject is walking at a normal pace. So we're going to demonstrate how to do walk calibration. So you first click on the walk calibration icon, and you enter in the subject's weight. So after you do that, you hit the OK button, and now it's armed to record and calibrate at the same time. So once you hit record, it's now calibrating and recording. So once the subject's done recording, you'll notice that the color legend now is in engineering units. If for some reason the calibration isn't considered good, you'll get this error message saying that the software could not apply the calibration to this movie. This basically just safeguards you against poor calibration and it ens ensures accurate and reliable data. The system will still remain in raw units, and you will have to recalibrate. The next one we're going to look at is step calibration. Step calibration reduces trial variability and should be used with subjects that can balance on one foot. It is recommended for most research applications. However, it is best used in trials where the subject is jogging, running, performing some kind of athletic maneuver. So to demonstrate this, we're going to go ahead and click on the step calibration icon. And again, we're going to enter in the subject's weight. <clears throat> and then you have them start by standing on the foot that isn't going to be calculated. So we're going to have her start by standing on the right foot, and we're going to hit the start button. And then they'll tell her to switch over to the left foot, which is the foot we're calibrating. Okay, so calibration was successful, so if we want to apply it, we hit the OK button. And then we're going to calibrate the other foot. So we're going to have our start by standing on the left foot. And we'll hit the Start button. And then the software will tell her to switch to the right foot, which is the foot we're calibrating. And 
and again, you can see that the calibration was successful, so you hit OK. And you can see that the legend's now in kilopascals. <clears throat> and again, if uh, the software couldn't achieve a good calibration, you're going to get this error message letting us know that a well-fit calibration could not be achieved. With the step calibration, though, it does give you a couple recommendations. Like it asks, was the sensor loaded throughout, which means was the subject wobbling or not, which would be one indication that the calibration might not work. And also, it gives the recommendation of using vertical surface for balance. We'll actually go into more detail of that in a few minutes, but you can use some kind of aids to help in balance if needed. So the system will remain in raw units, and you will have to recalibrate if uh, there was an error in the calibration. <clears throat> As for point calibration, so the final calibration routine. And point calibration is a linear relationship between raw units and engineering units. So the values are going to depend on how quickly the user hits the calibration button. So what you want to do is you want to hit the calibration button kind of in the same manner that you were expecting to load the sensor. So if you're doing a quick calibration uh, or a quick uh, maneuver, then you're going to want to calibrate as quickly as possible. If you're doing something like a standing or balance study, you may want to have them stand on the sensor for at least 30 seconds and then hit the calibration button. So here what we're going to do is we're going to do a demonstration of a quick calibration or a quick routine. So what we'll do is you have to calibrate each foot separately. So we're going to calibrate the left foot first, click on point calibration, again enter in the subject's weight, and to mimic the application you hit the start button as quickly as possible. We'll still have them offload and then onload to the foot you want to calibrate. So now we're going to calibrate the right foot. We're going to hit the point calibration again. And we're going to have her offload and then onload onto the foot and then hit the calibrate button as quickly as possible. And again, once you're done, you hit OK. And you can see that the color legend is in kilopascals and everything is calibrated. With the point calibration, you don't get an error message. So sometimes it might be difficult to know whether you've calibrated properly or not. One of the best methods is looking over here at the pressure saturation. You want these numbers to be as close as possible. So you want to keep out and look and see if they're within um, uh, 10 to 20 percent of each other. Okay. So here are a few tips to optimize accuracy of your calibration. Again, you can use a vertical surface for stability. And you also want to visually inspect the real-time pressure image to make sure that you're applying a good load onto the sensor. So to use a vertical surface for stability, you're going to use this for step and point calibration only. You want to stand close to the wall, and you want to touch the surface at about eye level. You do not want to use a surface such as a table or a chair to lean on because what you're doing is you're losing some of that vertical force and you won't have a very accurate calibration. And if you want to inspect the pressure, so what you want to do is you want to look at the, the loaded pressure cells and you want to make sure that you don't have any missing rows or columns. This is called dropout. If you do happen to have a missing row or column, you probably want to get rid of the sensor and get a new one. You also want to observe the foot profile. You want to see all the landmarks of the feet, and you want to make sure that the everything is being covered. Okay, so that's a calibration, essentially, and picking your calibration routine. If you have any questions, please give us a call or send us an email, and we'll be happy to answer them.